Okay, worked exam questions for straight line graphs, of the, usually of the form y equals mx plus c. On the grid below, draw the graph of this for the values from 0 and 5. Now, if you have to draw a graph, you might be uh, most familiar with drawing a table of values for x and y. Let's actually change that to between 0 and 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Um, so the y value is 8 minus 2x. So 2 lots of x is 0, 8 minus 0 is 8, 8 minus 2 lots of 1 is 6, 8 minus 4 is going to be 4, and then you can see a pattern, you could just finish it off. That's one way of doing it, and then plotting the value 0, 8, and so on. Um, difficult for me to plot using this the software I've got here, but here we go. Um, another way of doing it, um, a slightly quicker way, if you know how to use the equation or the line, this value 8 is the C value that we have in our MX plus C, which is the Y intercept, which is that value there, 8 here. So we know it crosses us at 8 on the Y axis. This here tells us the gradient, so uh, minus 2 means for every 1 across, every 1 you cross on the scale, you're going to go down 2. So when I go across 1 to 1, I'm going to go down 2 to 6. When I go across to 2, I'm going to go down 2 to 4. Then across 1, down 2 to 2, across 1, down 2, across 1, down 2, and so on. OK, let me just get a ruler. And here we go. Best I can do. And join up the points. You must join the points up, that's one mark for just drawing the points up accurately and the other will be for plotting the points accurately. OK, general question here, we've got a connection between hiring tools and the number of days, how much it costs. Um, so we've got to find the correct form for C that represents this line here. Now this line here, we can see goes through this point here checking the scale being not going by 1 but 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, that's the number 16. So we know, go, we know it goes through 16, so looking through these equations there's two of the 16 in, but there's only one where it's plus 16, which is where that one is. We just check the gradient. As we go across 1 we're going up 2, 4, 6, 8. So 8D plus 16 would be the correct answer there. Now the cost of hiring tools from Woods tool hires given by this formula 9d plus 11 Sam thinks that, it was, that Woods would be cheaper, is this true? Give reasons for your answer. Well uh, we could just put some values in to show this isn't true or we could um, plot it on the graph uh, starting at 11 and then every one across you're going up 9 so it's going to be at 20 then 2 is going to be at 29 and 3 is going to be at 38 then 39, uh, 49, and then sorry, 47, then 56, and so on. And then you can see here it's starting to overtake, and you could show that. Um, so that's what one way of showing that they say they cross, they are equal when. D equals 5, or give an example when D equals 10, uh, branch tools will be equal to 80 plus 16, which is 96, and woods will be equal to 90 plus 11, which is 101. So, no, not so, not, not always true. Right, now we have one with some big values. Uh, work out the coordinates of C and D. Where's it cross here and where's it cross here? So, well, C, start off with, we're going to get 0 something, and D is going to be something 
0. It's got no y coordinate. Now, to figure this out, if we look at what's going on here, so when I go across here and down here, I'm going across from 400 to 250, which is 150, and then I'm going down 300. So for every 150 across, I'm going down 300, so that's a gradient of 2. Um, going this way, I'm going every every 150 across, I'm going up 300. That's the correct way to look at the gradients. So going across and up. So how far have I got left to go? I've got um, 250 left to go. So how far am I coming to come down? Well, that's twice as far as I go across. So that's 500. And I'm at 620 here. So this is 620. So coming down 500 is going to leave me at 120. Okay, now to do this one, I just work out I've got to come down another 120. How far across do I go? Well, if I'm going up 300, I'm going to cross 150. So if I'm going down 120, I'm going to cross 60. And that's minus 60 because it's plotted over here at minus 60. Okay, parallel lines. Work out the equation of the line through C that's parallel to AB. So we've got to work out this equation, this line here. Um, this line here is parallel to this line, so the gradient is going to be the same. So if we look at the gradient of this line, so I'm going across from 0 to 2, I'm going up from 1 to 7, which is 6. So this is a gradient is equal to 6 over 2, which is 3. So our equation is going to be y equals 3x and it's going to be plus something. We've got to figure out what that number is. So if we can work out um, m is the midpoint, so we're going to do this again. We're going to go across another 2 and then up 6. So 2 and 6, that's going to be at 4 and 13. So this, this value here is 13, so it goes through the number 13, so that is 13. A, B and C lie on the line 2x plus y equals 6. Okay, if I rearrange that to get the y equals, that's going to be minus 2x plus 6. So the gradient is minus 2 and the y intercept is 6, so that point there is 0, 6. Um, B is midpoint of AC. Um, we really want to figure out what C is, I think. If we want to work out the equation through D, once we've got C we can get a gradient and then we can figure out what this value is here uh, from there. And okay, so this is 0, 06. This point here where it goes is is going to be something 0. So we're going to go down 6. So we're going down 6 how far across we're going to go. Well the gradient is minus 2, so every one down, uh, one across we're going down 2. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. And so that's going to be 3 across. And as this is the midpoint, this is going to be minus 3. And we're going to go up another 6, which is 12. So this gradient here is going from minus 7 to minus 3, which is 4 and it's going up 12, so that's a gradient of 12 divided by 3 sorry, divided by 4 which is 3 so that has a gradient of 3, so that equation is going to be y equals 3x plus something but something, well, if I'm going 3 up every one across, I'm at minus 3 here I've got to go another 3 across so if every three, 1 across I go up 3, so I'm going to have to go up 9 so from 12 I'm going to go up 9 which is 21 and that tells me the y-intercept and therefore this value. Two straight lines shown prove that lines never meet. If they never meet, uh, need to prove they are parallel. That means they never meet. So have the same gradient. Parallel lines have the same gradient. So here we've got what's our gradient here? We're going across nine and we're going up three. So our gradient is three divided by nine. It's for every one across. So we divide by nine to work out that, which is one third. 
and this one crosses at 2 0, sorry, 0 2, and goes up. So 6 across goes up 2. So gradient equals 2 divided by 6, which is also 1 third. Both lines have a gradient of 1 third, therefore parallel. OK, we've got intersecting lines. The equation of line A is that. Work out the equation of line B. OK, now that's written in a, in a pretty nasty form, so if we can rearrange it, so we've got take everything to the other side, we get minus 4x minus 12, so y equals minus 4 over 3x, and divide that by 3 gives us minus 4. OK, so this passes through minus 4, and we know that it's going across 6 and up 4, so the gradient is going to be four di the y divided by the x, which is 2 thirds. So our equation on the line is y equals 2 thirds x, and then it goes through minus 4, so the y intercept is minus 4. OK, and then the lines that are parallel to the y equals 3x, so those are the ones with a gradient of 3, so that one, so line P. Um, this has a gradient of minus 3. This is awkward because the x is on this side, which for our purposes we need to have it on the other side, so that's going to be minus 3 plus 8, so that's a gradient of minus 3, so that's not it. Take this one over to the other side, 3x plus 1, because we're adding the 3x, so that one is has has a gradient of 3, so it's parallel to 3x. Which line goes to the point 2, 7? Well, the x coordinate is 2, the y coordinate is 7. Um, so what we can do here is take the 2 and take the 7, put it into the equation and see which one works. So if I put 2 into here, I get 6. 6 plus 5 is 11, so that's not 7. 2 into here is 6. 4 minus 6 is minus 2, that's not 7. Um, 7 plus 3, lots of 2. 13, so that's not 8, and 7 minus 3, lots of 2, 7 minus 6 is 1, so that one works, so y minus 3x equals 1, so line s. Write down the gradient of that, um, we need to rearrange it so that we have y equals, and that gives the gradient of minus 2. Explain why the y equals a half x is perpendicular to y equals 2x plus 7, so gradient of y equals a half x equals a half, therefore perp will have a gradient of minus uh, one, 1 divided by a half which is going to be 1 divided by half is 2, so that's minus 2, and uh, y plus 2x equals 7 is the same as y equals minus 2x plus 7, so it's a gradient of minus 2 also. Run a bit of space there. Okay, gradient of AB is 2 fifths, A to B is 2 fifths, Write down the gradient of D to C. D to C, because it's a rectangle, these are parallel, so that's also two fifths. When it says write down and it's one mark, that usually means you just got to pick a number out somewhere. Work out the gradient of BC. BC is at right angles to AB, so that's ne the negative reciprocal of two fifths. So negative reciprocating two fifths, we turn it upside down, which is five over two. We could write that as two and a half, or just leave it as five over two. A is the point zero four. So that's at the point 4. Write down the equation of line AD. Well, AD is parallel to BC, so we know it has a gradient of minus 2.5x, and then it goes through the number 4. Work out the equation of the line L. So it goes through the number 1, at uh, minus 1, and for every 1 across, we go down. Now, don't count the squares, you've got to look at the scale. This is going down 1, 2 on this scale. So that's a gradient of minus 2. 
so y equals minus 2x and then it goes through minus 1 write down the gradient of the perpendicular to L, so perpendicular um, the negative reciprocal of minus 2, so negative reciprocal would make it 2 and then sorry, negative makes it 2 and then reciprocating 2 gives you a half uh, write down the coordinates of the point where the line crosses the y-axis ok, so that's the number 3 so 0, 3, because that's the equation uh, the line parallel to 2x plus 3 is drawn the point 3p, work out the equation of this line so this also has a gradient of 2 so to work out where it crosses we need to come down uh, we need to come across 5 if we come in across 5 that means we've come down 10 because the gradient is twice the x value so we've come down 10 to go across 5 so that's going to be 4 and then another minus 6 so that's going to be y equals 2x minus 6 and the last question equation that show the gradient of m is greater than the gradient of a line perpendicular to the line n so m we've got the gradient is going to be divided through that by 2 because we need 1y so the gradient is 11 over 2 so m gradient equals 11 over 2 which is 5.5 .5. and for n y equals 10 divided by 5 which is 2 minus x over divided by 5 which is 1 fifth of x so that's the gradient gradient of perp particular equals 5 therefore m greater than n whoops I wrote 5 there let's just change that to n